Looks like Batman's gonna go to court. Hey everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is James, thanks for stopping by. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. We talk Batman, Penguin, and more. We're our charcuterie board of digital content. And a big thank you to all of our new subscribers. We're looking to hit 4,000 subscribers, so if you haven't, hit that subscribe button. All right, let's get right into it. The Penguin is done. It's over. What a fantastic freaking ride this show was. It started strong. And I thought it ended even stronger. I was like, can you stick the landing? I loved it, obviously. I talked about it multiple times throughout the weeks leading into the episodes. I had so much fun with it, so much fun talking with you guys about it. But now I started thinking, start wondering, how does this lead into the Batman 2? A lot of speculation on what the Batman 2 could be, but where is it going? Matt Reeves has been speaking. Everyone's been talking about it. Colin Farrell kind of had his opinion on where Batman was. Matt Reeves now was talking to Rotten Tomatoes, and he had to say the following... It's sort of teased in the final episode of The Penguin how things work, how the system works. And I think being able to dive into the true reason for the perpetual darkness of Gotham is one of the exciting things that I'm excited for about The Batman Part 2. He also says, and he's said this multiple times, but The Penguin series was an entry point into The Batman 2. And the beginning of The Batman, The Penguin himself will be an entry point into the movie so whatever the movie however the movie begins is going to be penguin now i think it would be phenomenal if the first shot of the movie is the last shot of the show and we just see we see crown point we see gotham and we see the bat signal in the sky kind of be cool and you wouldn't have to know where it came from but fans of the show viewers of the show would be like i, I gotcha i see that i don't think that's how it would start but i you know who would be opposed to starting a batman movie with a bat signal nobody but this quote from Matt Reeves of Rotten Tomatoes got me thinking, what could it be about? Now, I've done multiple videos on this channel talking about who the villain of the next movie could be, and I've got more planned. I've got a lot more planned on American Thanksgiving, on Thanksgiving. I've got a few Batman videos coming out that day. It's going to be a fun day on the channel. You should check those out. Also, my friend Brian, who's working on an animation called One Night in Gotham, sent over these stills right here. And this is Holy Christmas, Batman. And you can check that out on his channel now. It's about a minute and a half and it's just a jolly good time for all Batman fans. That's out of the way. So while I think it could be any one of the villains that I will be talking about in coming weeks and months and whatnot, and as speculation grows until we learn more about the Batman 2, I'm focused on Oz Cobb the Penguin. Colin Farrell said he has about five to six scenes. He's been told, he hasn't seen the script, he said that he's been told he has about five or six scenes which doesn't sound like a lot but he wasn't in much of the first batman but had a great impact and obviously the show came out and was an even greater impact but he had a big impact in the movie and when you watch the movie it feels like he's in it a lot longer kind of like beetlejuice in the original beetlejuice you think oh this is a beetlejuice movie but beetlejuice is in it for like 15 minutes or something or you know like batman and batman returns where batman's kind of you know the fourth <laughs> lead of his own movie i love batman returns I have a video coming out about that as well but what this quote leads me into is to believe that Oz Cobb has his rise in, do to dom in dominance in Gotham City. He becomes a power play figure, right? He's Carmine Falcone's right-hand man with Batman last season. And all of a sudden, he's grown into somebody with great influence on the city, with someone who can influence congressmen, someone who has influence over the town, who can get the lights back on on Crown Point. How much of that goes towards him? Who knows? Batman knows something's up, though. Obviously, Sophia Falcone's in prison. Now, I'm not saying the movie's going to touch on this stuff, but we know this watching this show, that there's a lot of balls have been dropped and put into play that Batman, the greatest detective, would start to figure out and put it in there, right? So, that being said, the movie's going to start with the Penguin, and maybe an interaction with Penguin and Batman together, who knows? but possibly, and that could be a lot of fun. But where does this lead? I think through Penguin, Batman's going to learn about more and more of the corruption within Gotham. He'll probably work closely with Bella Real. Maybe not even Batman. Maybe Bruce Wayne will work closely with Bella Real. Maybe Bruce Wayne will be more of a focal point of this movie than Batman. A lot of the complaints of the first Batman was the portrayal of Bruce Wayne and how Bruce Wayne wasn't really in it too much and mostly Batman. I didn't have these complaints, but these were things that were said by people. They were like, I didn't like the character of Bruce Wayne and I wasn't Bruce Wayne in it that much. And I think in the sequel, what you could do is you can almost flip it. I wouldn't do a total 180 because I think you still want Batman to be in it quite a bit. But you have Bruce Wayne being a figurehead in Gotham now. Taking on what Bella Real said. I have another video about where is Batman during the events of Penguin. I think that leads into it a little bit. Trying to get 
uh, money and resources for Gotham during this time. So Bruce Wayne himself could use his family's legacy, his family's business, his family's fortune to propel himself, to position himself, to interact with the upper class of Gotham, to understand what's going on there. And he can start to see the criminal activity at play, that it bleeds down from the very top. Not from Bella Real, obviously, but from a lot of people around him, from everybody around him, Bruce Wayne can start to see this through that, and he can see the Penguin, and the Penguin could be his entry point into this evil that is going on, the darkness that is going on in Gotham City. And all of that through the Penguin. And when he starts to put the puzzle pieces together, and whatever happens with Penguin, whether he goes to Arkham or Blackgate or whatever, or he just maintains being Penguin because now he's clean, right? Penguin's clean, so I don't think Batman could put him away that easily, or Bruce Wayne, for that matter, could put him away that easily. Neither one of them. Nobody can. Gordon can't. And Gordon, we don't know if he's a commissioner yet. Last time we saw him, he was a lieutenant. Where is that going to play out? Are we going to see him become commissioner in this? Are we going to wait another movie? Or will he ever be commissioner, Gordon? I would love him to. So where does that lead? So I think through Penguin, Bruce Wayne through Penguin, Batman doing his detective biz, I think that's when the, we're going to start to get the puzzle pieces fitted together. Now, whether or not it all plays out in this movie or we get it in full in the third remains to be seen. But I think this is when we get the Court of Owls. I think the Penguin series was to show us Oz's rise to power, how the darkest, most evil person can propel themselves to the top. And the reason why that's allowed isn't because Gotham is full of corrupt people, which it is. It's because the overseers of Gotham are allowing it to happen. They're allowing this power play to evolve. Maybe because they have a Batman problem. Maybe because of other reasons. I think we're going to learn more about the Wayne's past. Bruce's family's past. And we're going to see a connection to the Court of Owls. And it's all going to be through this brief interaction either Bruce Wayne or Batman has with Oz Cobb at the beginning of the Batman 2. I also want to bring up something about this series that I thought was phenomenal. That was Eve Carlo. I thought Eve was a great character, and I thought for sure she was a goner. When I saw her in the dress at the end of the last episode, I was like, she's going to get whacked. But she wasn't. And a lot of fans connected her name with, obviously, Basil Karloff, who was, is Clayface, an iteration of Clayface. And she's not Clayface, but for me, what I would suggest and what I took away from it was that she was an homage to Clayface because she took on the persona, because she took on the characteristics of Oz's mother when Oz needed her to. So in that way, she's kind of like Clayface. She's kind of manipulating herself to become somebody else in a Clayface fa in a Clayface fashion. So I don't think she is Clayface, and I don't think Clayface is going to be a play a part in the Batman, in the Reevesverse Batman. I don't think that's going to happen. I think because of what we got in Cape Crusader and now because Eve Carlo, I believe she is the representation of Clayface in this universe. She's not obviously that, but she's using, you know, the aspects of Clayface and they're kind of playing homage to it. And I kind of like that. But let me know what you guys think. Are we heading to Court of Owls in the Batman 2? Is that what the Penguin season finale led us to? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, may you be the master of your own universe.